Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software, and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 10, HyperKeys 101, I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to start using HyperKeys. HyperKeys will save you time by performing complex edits at the push of a single button. With a bit of practice, it's easy to get into and out of HyperKeys whenever necessary. I've prepared the sample file that has some errors that need to be corrected, and I'm going to show you how you can use HyperKeys to correct them. Right now, I do have HyperKeys turned on. There are a few different ways that you can tell if HyperKeys are turned on or off. First, if you have the HyperKey icon in your toolbar, it will appear depressed whenever HyperKeys are enabled. If I click on this button, HyperKeys are now disabled, and you can see that the button no longer appears to be depressed. If I click on the button again, you see that the button is now depressed again and highlighted, and hyperkeys are enabled. And you see that when I toggle this button, my cursor becomes larger when hyperkeys are enabled and smaller when hyperkeys are turned off. So once again, I'll turn hyperkeys off. You see that my cursor has become narrow, and when I turn hyperkeys back on, my cursor becomes thicker. This particular setting is controllable. You can change how thick your cursor is with hyperkeys on or off by going to your user settings, to the display tab, and to cursor size and hyperkey size. And you see that the cursor size width is much smaller than the hyperkey size width, and these settings can be customized so that you can have your cursor and your hyperkey cursor as large or small as you desire. I'm going to leave mine set at the default, but you see that since I do have the thick cursor, I know that hyperkeys are enabled. There's a third place that I can tell if hyperkeys are enabled as well. Down in the bottom right hand corner of my screen in my status bar, I see the letters HYP. If I toggle hyperkeys off once more, HYP disappears. And of course, since hyperkeys are a keyboard based system intended to save time, you can of course toggle hyperkeys on and off with the keyboard. If I press Alt Z, hyperkeys turns on. And if I press Alt Z one more time, hyperkeys turns off. And all three indicators across my screen from the button to my cursor to my status bar icon all change in unison. So it's easy to know whenever hyperkeys are on or off. In addition, if you're an InfoBar user, you'll notice that in the InfoBar on the left, I do have my hotkeys displayed. And when I toggle hyperkeys off, the hotkey that is displayed changes back to the standard key. And when I toggle hyperkeys back on, the hotkey listed changes to the hyperkey. You'll see the same action in the drop down menus at the top of the screen. Wherever there is an appropriate hyperkey for a function, the hyperkey will be listed instead of the standard key whenever hyperkeys is enabled. So Eclipse makes it easy not only to know what your hyperkey status is, but to turn hyperkeys on and off, as well as to be easily reminded of the hyperkeys that you may frequently use. Additionally, if I go to Support, Documentation, there is an Eclipse HyperKeys PDF. I can open this PDF, and this is a complete keyboard map of all of the HyperKeys in Eclipse. If you're a new HyperKey user, I recommend printing this out so that you can refer to it. All of the keys listed in blue would be pressed by themselves when HyperKeys are enabled in order to take this action. The keys listed in dark red would be pressed with shift, as you see down here in the map guide. The keys listed in green would require that control is pressed with them, and the keys listed in purple require that alt is pressed. This is an excellent guide to refer to when you're learning hyperkeys. I'm going to close this for now, and I'll close the documentation folder as well. There are several errors in this document that I've prepared that I'd like to correct. However, the first hyperkeys you should familiarize yourself with are those to move through the document. Since I have hyperkeys enabled, I can use L to move to the right, word by word. I can use K to move down, line by line. I can use J to move left, word by word. And I to move up, line by line. These function the same way that the arrow keys do, and they're laid out in exactly the same format, so they're easy for your fingers to learn. However, they're on your home row of keys, so as you're editing through your document, Moving will require less movement from your hands, resulting in speedier and more efficient editing. The first error that I need to correct is actually the name of this company. The company is 15South, 
and the South should be capitalized. And I want to make sure that whenever these words appear in my document further on, that not only is South capitalized, but that 15 and South are locked together so that they can't be separated onto separate lines. There's a hyper key to automatically global two strokes. I can press Alt-7 to global two strokes, Alt-8 to global three strokes, Alt-9 to global four strokes, and Alt-0 to global five strokes. I'm going to press Alt-7 to global 15 and South together. And the tools to capitalize and lock these words together are right at my fingertips already. I can press Alt-C to capitalize South, and Alt-L to insert a lock space between both words. And since I want to put this into my job dictionary, instead of clicking the drop down list to select the job dictionary, I can simply press Control J. And this entry is now in my job dictionary, as you can see in the bottom right. The next error in this document that I'm going to correct, if I use the L hyper key to move to the right, I land on the word audit, and this should actually be auditor. I'm going to press hyper key W to bring up the prefix suffix list. And I'll press R to select the R ending. And you see that auditor has automatically been entered into the document and spelled correctly. The next error that I'm going to correct is here in the accounting and department. This word just shouldn't be here. So with my cursor on the word and, I'm going to hit hyper key D to delete the word. And you see that the word and, as well as the space after it, was deleted. And now I have accounting and department with a single space between them like I need. The next error in this document is simply a missing lock space. I'm going to use the info bar on the left to just insert a lock space between nine and years, and I'll move on to the next problem. The next error that I need to fix is simply to remove the S from the word arounds. There are two shaving commands in the hyper key command list for Eclipse. If I go back to support Eclipse documentation and refer to my hyper key guide, you see that for S, if I press just the S itself, it will shave the previous word, which means that it will remove the last character of the previous word. But if I press Shift S, it will shave the current word. So that means that it will take the last letter off of the current word of my cursor position. So I'm going to minimize this list. And according to the hyper key guide, if I hit Shift S, the S on arounds will be removed. So I'm going to hit Shift S. And indeed, correctly, the S on arounds has been removed and now I have just a round. I'm going to press hyper key L to move to the right one more time. And this is a dollar figure that I want to convert to money. So I'm going to press hyper key shift M, which if I refer to my hyper key guide is to convert to money. So I'm going to press shift M and that figure has automatically converted to a dollar amount for me with the press of a single button. The alternative to converting this information would have been to go to the Convert Numbers dialog, choose Money, and then press OK. That would be a three-step process that was refined to a single keystroke using the HyperKey system. The next error here is an errant comma, and I can use HyperKey S to shave the previous word and get rid of that comma. Down here, I see that I need to do another multi-stroke global. I'll press Alt-7 again to do a two-stroke global. And the mascot's name was actually Emelot. I'll type in Emelot and press Control-J to put this in my job dictionary once again. And you see that now Emelot has entered into my job dictionary. The next error that I need to correct is the entry for Mandrake. This should actually just go in my main dictionary, so once again I can press Alt-7 for a multi-stroke global. Simply remove the space from between man and drake and enter that into my main dictionary. My next error here is that I've dropped my terminal punctuation between these two sentences, so I'll enter a period simply by pressing a period. Everything is formatted automatically. I get my period, two spaces, and a capital letter. All I needed to do was simply hit the period, and if I insert a period in an incorrect location, I can simply press the backspace button to remove it and undo the automatic spacing and capitalization. I'll reinsert my period. And the last error that I have to correct is to put a question mark at the end of this sentence. And to do that, all I need to do is press hyper key Q. To change the punctuation at the end of the sentence, I didn't even need to move my cursor to the end of the sentence or even to the same line that the sentence ended on. My cursor was located on the word is, 
and all I need to do to insert terminal punctuation is either hit hyperkey P for a period or hyperkey Q for a question mark. There are many handy hyperkeys. For instance, if my speaker actually said that's all I have instead of that is all I have today, I could simply come here and hit my hyper key for the accent mark or tilde key in the top left of my keyboard to change that to that's. And then I can use hyper key D to remove the is. Hyper keys make it easy to make any correction that you need to in your document. However, sometimes hyper keys may not be appropriate. There may be times where you need to simply type. And while hyper keys are enabled, you obviously cannot type since most of your letter keys are assigned to perform actions. So if I did need to type, for instance, if the speaker actually did say, I think that is all I have today instead of that's all I have today, I could shave off the apostrophe S and using hyper key N, go into type mode. You see that as soon as I hit hyper key N, my cursor changed to the narrow cursor. And at the bottom right, instead of hyper key mode, I'm in type mode. Type mode allows me to type anything literally. For instance, if I insert a period right now, I don't get any automatic formatting, and that's because I'm in type mode. While in type mode, I'm going to get only the keys that I hit with no automatic control from Eclipse. So I can type in is, and once I'm done with type mode, I can press enter. And you see that hyper keys have automatically been re-enabled now that I'm done typing. So again, to type text, I can simply hit hyper key N, type in, everything that I need to type in. And once I'm done typing, if I press enter, I'm in hyper keys once again, and I can use I to move up through the document, K to move down through the document, and any of my other commands, such as my cap toggle command, to modify any of my words. And again, I can keep the hyper key PDF printed out or available on my computer by going to support, Eclipse documentation, Eclipse hyperkeys. And if you look at this document, there are hyperkeys to perform a large number of edits and other functions in Eclipse. You can find and reverse find with F and Shift F. You can scan to untranslates or conflicts. If I return to my document, if I return to my document and press hyperkey C, I'm taken to the next conflict in my document. If I mark a word, I can use hyperkey U or hyperkey T to scan to that. As referred to in the PDF, hyperkey U will go to an untranslate and hyperkey T will go to the next trouble spot, whether that's an untranslate, an unselected conflict, or any other error that can be scanned to. Familiarizing yourself with hyperkeys will save you a ton of time because it allows you to move through and edit your document without removing your hands from your keyboard. You don't have to waste time to reach over for your mouse to click on things. And the hyper keys have been designed in such a way that the most frequently used items are readily at hand. Everything is designed around the home keys on the keyboard. And with a little bit of practice, most users find hyper keys incredibly time saving, convenient, and easy to use. Once you get used to hyper keys, you'll wonder how you ever lived without them. In this short example, I didn't show you everything that hyper keys are capable of. It could take hours to show you all of the ways that hyperkeys can save you time. I hope that you will give hyperkeys a try because with only a little bit of practice, they do become second nature. In addition to basic editing and movement commands, hyperkeys also include audio commands. You'll see here that all of your audio commands are available and specified in the hyperkey list as well. And of course, while hyperkeys are active, all of the regular commands work. While I have hyperkeys active, I can still press Ctrl G to global instead of just hitting G. Either command will work. The important thing to remember is that hyperkeys will only work while hyperkeys are enabled. If you need to type text while hyperkeys are enabled, simply press hyperkey N, type anything that you need to type, and hit enter once you're done typing. That works much the same way as type mode does when you need to type numbers when you're an infobar user. If you're already familiar with enabling type mode in order to type numbers and then hitting enter to go back to using the info bar, transitioning to hyper keys will be fairly similar. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you'll give hyper keys a try. 
Don't forget that you can always print out the HyperKey map so you can refer to it anytime. If you have any questions about HyperKeys or any of Eclipse's other great features or Advantage Software's other amazing products, don't forget that you have access to anytime support 24-7. Tech support can be reached anytime including weekends and holidays at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new content in the future. Thanks so much and have a great day.